Welcome to Fat Logic, where people think choices don't affect outcomes. The first post comes to us from Elmir2000. You aren't fat because you eat too much. Your body is fat because that's just how your body is. You don't need to eat less. You do not need to limit your body. You do not need to punish your body. Invisible Space Vamp replies, Your bank account isn't empty because you spend too much. Your bank account is empty because that's just how your bank account is. You do not need to limit your spending. You do not need to punish your shopping habit. Quote from Dom McDimwit, motivational speaker and registered financial advisor. Mentally tired brings us. When we lost our darn minds. In the future, a group of kids of all sizes will be sitting in health class. Their teacher will be explaining about eating a variety of food and how it's important to keep listening to your body when it comes to what you eat and what kind of movement you want to do. One of the kids says, my great grandma was talking about being on a diet. What's a diet? Teacher explains, that comes from the time when people decided that all bodies should be thin, trying to get their body to be different size than it was naturally. People decided to feed their bodies less than what they needed to try to make them smaller. Another kid asks why. The teacher explains, people got confused and thought that the only way to be healthy was to be thin. The kid asks, did it work? The teacher sighs, no, not at all. It turns out that dieting actually often made people's bodies bigger than they were meant to be permanently and messed up their metabolisms. Some people were able to lose weight in the short term, but almost nobody succeeded over the long term and a lot of people ended up less healthy after dieting. Also, people who had larger bodies were tremendously stigmatized by everything from magazines to doctors and for a long time, larger bodied people were treated like second class citizens. People assumed that they were lazy, weak willed, even less smart than thin people. And the stress from that led to a lot of diseases that got blamed on the people's body sizes by the people who were stigmatizing them. Wow, a little girl with a larger body will say. I'm glad I didn't live then. I believe that in the future of public health, this time in history will be known as the time when we lost our darn minds. If you take a step back from this, you'll see how ridiculous it is. Well, that part at least is true. If you take a step back from the story, you do realize how ridiculous it is. Billion Dollar Balls replies, The time spent on writing this fanfic could have been spent on taking a walk. Millie Alim, Excuse you. The person who wrote this article is an elite athlete who completed a marathon in 12.5 hours and did not start two Ironmans. How dare you? Sorry, Lowell. I recognize the blog. I guess this must be Reagan Chastain, who's in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the fattest person to ever complete a marathon. Of course, they completed a marathon in the same amount of time that the average person could walk a marathon. Easily. With bathroom breaks and stops for meals. Ms. Beaver brings us Anti-fatness is oppression how systems normalize and benefit from bigotry in society. Hating fat people for being fat is bigot behavior. This part doesn't bother me, but the arguments they use to support it, I do not agree with. Anti-fatness is rooted in anti-blackness and perceived lower levels of morality. People in power wanting free labor from enslaved humans, creating narratives around savagery and immorality based on non-white features, i.e. curves, hair texture, and fat distribution, lumping fatness with immorality and lack of control. White Europeans used the church, huge influence at the time, to identify fatness as a sin, gluttony. Natty MH replies, Gluttony has been a sin for the past 4,000 years, probably more, and was first communicated by God to brown humans in the Middle East, but yeah, it's Europeans' fault. Shifting away from resource hoarding to personal lack of willpower evidenced by being in a larger body, identifying thinness with self-control and being morally elevated, leaving white European women to start demonizing larger bodied women as immoral and gluttonous. Over decades using medical research based on anti-blackness and anti-fatness to normalize hatred of fat bodies. Biased researchers in academia identifying fatness with negative traits due to cultural bias using the BMI based on white men as a global measurement of health. Actually they've redone the BMI for various sexes and races and it turns out that the white people are healthier at a higher BMI than people of other races. So this argument isn't supported by the facts at all. They continue, research being paid for by companies that benefit from anti-fatness, i.e. diet culture. They're gonna have to explain that one. What company benefits from anti-fatness? 
I can't think of a single case, unless you admit that being fat has health consequences and therefore is causing people to be unable to work as much and things like that. People in power creating books, laws, and research based on a thin white male opinion. Treat it as fact. What laws have been created that have been based on the idea of the hatred of fat people? None. And research isn't created. Research is done to see if an idea is true or not. White women perpetuate these beliefs to maintain superiority under white males. Through media, research, and capitalism, fat hatred is now cemented and normalized throughout the world. No one questions this hatred, assuming that dehumanizing fat people is normal. That fat people are lesser than thin people, allowing thin people to be elevated based on genetic differences. So the idea here is that people in Europe wanted something, and they somehow propagated it to the rest of the world. And it somehow went backward in time as well. It's really amazing how powerful the people in Europe are affecting the entire world backward in time like that. This is super oversimplified. If you want more information on connection between anti-fatness and anti-blackness, please read the books below. Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia, and Belly of the Beast, The Politics of Anti-Fatness. You'd probably save your sanity a lot by not reading these books. This was in Business Insider. A woman couldn't understand why she wasn't losing weight after trying diets, exercise, and medication. A test revealed she was missing crucial gut microbes. Kimmy Gilbert couldn't seem to lose weight despite trying diets, exercise, and medication. Research suggests that gut microbiome composition might play a role in a person's weight. The word might is carrying a lot of weight there. Especially since it's more likely that your gut microbiome is affected by what you eat and not what you eat being affected by your gut microbiome. Gilbert got her stool analyzed in a lab and found that she was lacking some key microbes. Therefore, they're saying that it was those key gut microbes that was the reason she couldn't lose weight, and not because of her bad diet. She goes on to say, I would lose a lot of weight at first, but then it just comes right back, the single mom of three based in New Orleans told the documentary. So what she's saying is the gut microbes didn't affect her ability to lose weight. It's just that she did it in an unsustainable way and it would come right back. I don't know how the lesson here is your gut microbes are at fault and not you did it in a bad way. Here's another news article. The Association for Pet Obesity Prevention 2022 found 59% of US dogs and 61% of cats are overweight or obese. Moving Chicane replies, so just like the humans. I bet there is a lot of correlation between the humans overeating and the pets overeating. Mindless Monkey replies, This is obviously a lie because any cat will tell you they never get fat ever and are practically starving. This was in Data is Beautiful. It's the obesity rates per country versus time. This shows that for most countries, it's been increasing steadily. It also shows that since about 2010, Egypt has pulled ahead of the United States, so yay Egypt? Now the most interesting part of this are France and Germany have actually started to decrease the amount of obesity over time since about 2010. Some people in the comments had some explanations. France seems like an outlier with a negative trend. Typical French contrarianism. They just said no and gave obesity such a sneering look that it left. Okay, that part was just a joke, but here's the reality. Bonhomme de Neige replies, It's a combination of a lot of small things. In more recent years, banning free refills for sodas and putting more tax on them. So now instead of buying 1.5 liter bottle of Coke, it's now a 1.25 bottle for the same price were big ones. There's a lot of restriction on advertisement for food, and every food has to be surrounded by messaging like eat five fruits and veggies per day, and exercising is good for your health. And seeing how all those messages were implemented in the early 2000s, it's safe to say that those were effective when you see where the curve started to change. Honestly, in France, these messages were kind of seen like a meme almost, but it's hard to argue with the results. You've made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, please consider clicking like. If you really liked it, please consider clicking subscribe. If you really, 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 really liked it, please consider becoming a member. 
One dollar a month gets you the videos early before anyone else gets to see them. Members at the three dollar and five dollar level get their names read out at the end of each video. And members at the very highest level get one free short video every month or so. With that said, extra special thanks go to Emmett McNally, Cupcake or Death, Wolf Child Rusk, Just a Girl, Maria P, Stringa H, Rue the Viewer, and Grey Warden Invasion. I wish all of you wonderful people a wonderful day.